tyre fire at North Melbourne. Don't worry about what's been said. Just look at what's happening. Rebuilds fail, rebuilds collapse because of instability. An exodus in the recruiting departments is your football earthquake. So let's walk it back a few steps, shall we? It's really poor on our standards. You know, there's got to be consequences around training. There's got to be consequences around skill errors. Um, close to 80 points on turnovers, it's just unacceptable. So no, I'm not happy. I think the coaches are, are putting a high demand on what we require and we, we need our players to toe the line. We need them to get on board with the level of intent that we want to train at and that we want to play at. So they're one and seven, percentage of 55, an enormous injury list, and it is so broken down there, Jared. And it's not overstating things, Jared, to say there are questions being asked of the entire club by people inside the club. And that extends to the severity of and the seriousness of, are those in the positions of power the right people to be in the position of power. So I can reveal tonight that David Noble was so concerned about the nature of his spray at his players after the round three loss to Brisbane up at the Gabba that he reflected upon it and in the days afterwards he decided he needed to apologise to him for his conduct. Interesting in that story they denied that one player was in tears, a young player, but I've had that told to me that that took place around that game in round three or whatever term you want to use, emotional of, of sorts. And it wasn't just after the game either. Half time he delivered a stinging verbal spray as well. I'm a little bit bemused to think that this has made such big news, to be honest, um, off the back of what's occurred. Why did David feel the need to apologise to the players, Jack? I personally don't think he needed to apologise. I think he he did what was fair and reasonable after the game in a disappointing night. It's something that he, he decided to do um, and, and follow up with the group post that. From that point, the environment at our footy club over the last 18 months has been outstanding. So let's go in a list management direction where we can tell you that North Melbourne's prized number one draft pick, Jason Horn Francis, has stepped away from negotiations over a new deal at the club, Jared. Now, he was edging closer to signing a contract extension on the eve of the season that would have tied him to Arden Street for the long term. But we can tell you that the midfield wonder kid and his management have put that deal on hold until the end of the season, given North Melbourne's rocky start to the campaign. And the Kangaroos, like all clubs with access to top-end talent each year, were eager to see... Horn Francis commit for longer than the standard two-year draftee contract. So already this year, four of last year's top ten are locked away on new long-term deals. Five if you count Nick Dacos, who arrived on a four-year deal as a father-son. But they are Mac Andrew, Josh Rochelle, Neil Erasmus. They signed contract extensions in the early part of the year. Josh Sin, who was picked 12 at Port Adelaide, actually signed before he made his debut. So North Melbourne absolutely wanted to do that with a prodigy like Jason Horn Francis. But he's parking it for the year, Jerry. I know Jace pretty well, and um, he's obviously a super talented kid. Um, but yeah, it's decisions for him, his family, and, and obviously his management make that call, and it's got nothing really to do with us as players. Ultimately, that, that's up to Jason. Um, it's not unusual. He's not the only uh, first round pick that hasn't signed yet. And like anyone, he's, you know, he's got to make sure that he's had time to sit and think, and he'll, he'll make his decision, at, I guess, at the end of the year. Well, the team that recruited Jason Orn Francis have just quit. That's the setback <laughs> for North Melbourne at the moment. Can you believe it? They've been rocked by a triple resignation from their recruiting department. So it's difficult to sum up 18 months of dissatisfaction in a couple of minutes. But what we can say is that it was felt that in the recruiting department that there was a total lack of support from those in charge uh, at North Melbourne and also a total lack of communication from those at the very top at North Melbourne over a long period of time. There's been a disconnect there for 16 to 18 months. So it was anger that had built up. They quit because they were simply fed up. And for someone like Mark Finnegan, I mentioned, you know, 17 years there, I'm told it's absolutely broken his heart to leave, that he shattered. He, he had countless job offers from rival clubs over the years, but he always stayed, given his love for the club, the love for the club's culture, but it is said that that culture has eroded so far, Tim, that it's unrecognisable. We're talking about support, communication, fed up, and eroding of culture. Those are the things, they're pretty strong uh, assessments, and are, are they of concern to you and your footy club as we sit here today? Um, I think some things have certainly be sensationalised, but they're not comments that I've heard from any staff. And what I've seen as a player over the years is the clubs that do well are the clubs that have stability, and one thing North don't have at the moment is we spoke a couple weeks ago about the president changing, Brady Rawlings changing uh, positions, Dan, Daniel McPherson coming in, medical and high performance teams that have been replaced, and now three recruiting officers are gone all at the same time. So you sort of sit back and go, they they can't probably hit rock bottom any further than what, they, what they've already gone. There's a suggestion that he travelled to Adelaide a week ago without the knowledge of the club to see family and management. Is that true? 
Uh, I've got no idea about that, mate. I don't know where you've got that one from. Uh, Sam Edmund reporting that Jason Horn francis missed the round nine game with Port Adelaide with hamstring tightness after travelling to Adelaide without the club's knowledge. He certainly missed the game with hamstring tightness. Yes, that's true. They'd had a couple of uh, away trips and David Noble and Daniel McPherson, the head of football, sat together on the flight and they said, look, we should, let's give the players a bit of a break. We'll give them the Monday off. It's Mother's Day weekend. Go and see your families. Um, you know, wish your mothers well and come back on Tuesday. Now, unbeknownst to them, Jason took that literally and flew back home, grabbed his stuff and flew back out to South Australia, went home, saw his mum Trish, um, had a great Mother's Day there, unbeknownst to him that the club hadn't, um, wasn't OK with that. They haven't given him permission to go. But hang on, oh, can I jump in there? Yeah, jump in. If, if they said, go home and visit your mum, yep. well, if your mum's in a state, how else are you supposed to yeah. visit her? So when he got back, they said, look, you've got to let us know. where you, If you're going to go interstate, you've got to let us know. There's a SADA whereabouts issues mm. there as well. We want to know if you're getting on okay. another That's flight. Fair. So he, he's caught... Four flights in the space of almost as many days, yeah. and then he has hamstring tightness. This is an absolute non-story. If anyone thinks that as a club we would have any issue with that at all, uh, they're absolutely kidding themselves. Did you know that he was going? I think that's the issue. Did you know that he was going or, or not? There's a process that we have, and he missed a little step. To so say he was cautious is absolute nonsense. He's come in as a, as a, a big talent big personality, wants to win straight away, wants to have an influence on games, and they're clearly struggling, so he's been frustrated at times. Yeah, he he's been frustrated with team. Me of. Yeah. Nathan Buckley, when he first started. Because these are all the things that were levelled at him. Oh, he's offsided, you know, the players. And I think he's so ruffled hard. a few, he has ruffled a few well, feathers okay. down there, Jason. Yeah. And well, maybe that's a good... And when that, I say that's okay, I don't know that to be the case, but if it is, and it was for the right reasons, because he's demanding star yeah. standards or whatever. He's ruffled feathers along which line? Uh, teammates. Story comes out that David Noble has been spoken to about being too hard on the players. A few days later or a week later, the story comes out that Jason Hill Francis has put off any contract negotiations. Then you get this story coming out about Jason Horn Francis being cautioned over a trip to Adelaide to see his family. Now, when you add all these up and when you put in Zerha and then when you put in the recruiters leaving, that when you put in the losses, six by 50 plus points, and Jason Horn Francis is competitive as he is, when you put the fact in that North have been spoken about going to Tassie and they're playing in front of 13,000 on a Sunday at Marvel. This is an opportunity to absolutely um, prey on a club that is at its lowest ebb. Jason Horn Francis is going absolutely nowhere. And the more that everyone talks about this... You think he's staying at North? The more that little stories pop up, it just works. And Jason Horn Francis is and his management's are corner absolutely beautifully because straight away you can put it in the basket of... Jason Horn Francis didn't even tell North Melbourne and he came home to see his mum. Oh, homesick, all those types of things. And it's just going to increase the dollars. Is he more likely, less likely to recommit to North Melbourne beyond this year, do you think? I think he's still more likely to stay. But wouldn't most of us be sitting and waiting and seeing what's happening there, what's happening with the rest of the club? Are we actually going in the right direction? Am I happy here? Um, It's a watch at the moment, but I wouldn't be pushing the panic button.